thank you for coming and yeah this is a wonderfully culturally appropriate <laughs> setting uh, for a drum clinic I guess <laughs> Minnesota anyone from Wisconsin you, you're not keeping it real enough yeah, I'm letting you know that right now. It's colder here. I'm just going to tell you, on average. Um, so, stand a little closer to the fire if you're from Wisconsin, because. And by the way, what Lane didn't say is that this is a three-hour clinic. <laughs> I'm going to play for two hours. I'm going to take about ten minutes of questions because I know there's going to be a lot of questions, starting with why do you do that? Why do you? <laughs> why do you sound like that? And then I'm going to play for another 45 minutes after that. Um, my children are here, and they were running around on the icy sidewalk. And I was telling Tim that I'm sure I'm going to sue him um, for a lot more than just me burning my leg earlier today on the space heater. A fifth degree burn on my calf right now, which is going to affect a lot of my left foot playing today. I usually do a lot of really heavy independence with my left foot, Tim. You know I'm famous so for that. Sorry. It's unbelievable. None of that's going to happen today because uh, Tim burned my leg. And my son is going to, my other child, don't, you know who I'm talking to now, don't fall. Yeah, I've got one suit already. All right. Anyway, appreciate everyone being here. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, uh, just a caveat, I'm not, uh, the, I say this. I don't do many drum clinics that I that are well. I've never done one outside, but I've I've never I don't do many where I play a lot. Uh, I do talk a little bit, probably too much. But I'm going to do a little bit of improvising, and then we can talk about whatever or go back inside or whatever. But um, and uh, this is actually my normal setup right here. This is going to be very foreign. I usually just play a kit that's set up exactly like that, which is really what I wanted to do. But Lane's like, let's not get too unconventional today. You know what I mean? So I'm going to mine my way through this setup, which is weird. I, I do hope you go over and improvise on your typical <laughs> Anyway, thank you all for coming. It's, I, it means a lot. I should say that this, these two gentlemen, as long as we're saying nice things, I just, um, the, just it's a wonderful thing to have a... Uh, a, a drum shop dedicated to not only, you know, local kind of community and everything like that, but also dedicated to making incredible drums and being the nicest fellows ever. And of course, Lane is a wonderful drummer. Tim is a wonderful drummer. So a place uh, run by guys who are fantastic musicians and just very sweet people. And I'm, I'm, I'm. It's my my thrill to be hanging with you guys. And I that, I mean that. I, Tim has been a huge supporter of mine for many, many, many years. And Lane as well. I've known each other from Dillinger Four, and and um, in the music scene for many years. And it's great to have you know Lane's help getting this resurrected and everything. I was very excited that an Ellis Dream Drum Shop came back. So thank you again. Also, it's a very charming building. Um, it's like a little bit of a gingerbread house type exactly. vibe, so we're gonna just, I'm gonna do, uh, I mean, basically I'm gonna play solo drum interpretations of Christmas carols today. <laughs> so, first one is um, O Tannenbaum. <laughs>
the next hour, <laughs> I'm going to play this. <laughs> I have to say, where's that mic? Where's that mic? There we go, there we go. It's on your, it's on your normal setup. <laughs> Just, I have to say, it would be so heavy if we all sat out here for the next hour while I play this. <laughs> Everything that I played just now would look so lame next to me playing this bell and everybody out here just being together and dealing with it. <laughs> I mean, that would make the most progressive contemporary art concept look so lame. We would all be legends. We can be legends today if we want to. It's, it, you know, Tim, some people talk about it and some people actually do it. You notice that? Oh my god, I'm really into this idea. Are we cool? Yeah. For an hour? Start the filming? Yeah, we're ready. You want to watch your business explode, man? I'm ready. <laughs> you ready? You're going to need a bigger building up. I play this for an hour while we're all like this. And s silent, you know what I mean? I'm going to improvise a little bit more, maybe with this bill. And then, and then if there's any talking we can do, too. And um, thank you again. I hope it's okay. I'm just, that was a little kind of combination of um, a 12-8 kind of feel meets uh, 16th notes against its kind of a fun springboard for improvising. But I'm going to play something maybe a little freer now. So thank you again. <laughs> My hands are burnt. This bell's nice and warm.
That was, of course, Park the Herald. <laughs> Angels Sing, one of my personal favorites. Tim requested it. I got a grant <laughs> to do that for you, Tim. That is the best $600,000 I ever made. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Uh, to get paid 600 grand to do a solo drum interpretation of Hark the Herald Angels. Thank God we live in this community where the grant money flows like wine. You know what I mean, Tim? Exactly. I made almost enough money to pay for my son's broken collarbone that he's going to get any minute now walking on this parking lot. I like facing down the fact that we don't care if we live in a litigious society, do we, Tim? We're not going to assault that parking lot. <laughs> I fell down four times just to get to the front door. It's worth it. It's art. Does anybody have any questions other than why do you sound like that? It's terrible. <laughs> it's just, I have no other choice. You sound like that. <laughs> By the way, this is not even close to my sound, but whatever. Um... <laughs> Any questions about that? Yes, Todd, my friend Todd Trainer. What's your stand up rate? My stand up comedian rate. <laughs> <laughs> it's highly negotiable. <laughs> For you, a lot. <laughs> Todd Trainer, the great drummer Todd Trainer is here. Thank you, Todd. You're next, by the way. Get up here. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, what's a typical warm-up routine for you? That's a nice question, especially under these circumstances. <laughs> that was brilliant, actually. Let's not even answer that. <laughs> the question was, what if I have a typical warm-up routine? You know, I, that's, the reason why I say it's a good question is I actually don't really warm up on the drums uh, before any shows or, or anything. I know a lot of people that do, and I know, hi, Muhammad. I know uh, a lot of guys, for real, though, don't fall down. There's Otis and Muhammad, my children. Anyway, um, uh, I, I don't uh, uh, warm up uh, at all. Probably more mental, you know, just like anyone. I mean, anyone, you know, anyone, any of all of you perform or whatever, it's, sometimes it can be mentally stressful no matter how comfortable you are in a situation or anything. I always try to remain, you know, like energetically in the moment and not become like an old pro. I think that's dangerous to become an old pro at anything you know what i mean sometimes people think i'm, I'm an old pro now and I'm, i got it nailed and everything that can kind of take you out of creativity yeah on some level it's some malaise can set in and and you rely on something you really know how to do well i sometimes try to even doing this is very far outside my comfort zone to number one if any of you see me i don't solo very often i'm much more interactive i want to interact with things melodically and so when I do solo, I definitely try to work through musical themes, like both of those things had themes. At least I was trying to present some sort of conceptual theme there, instead of just blowing a bunch of riffs. And, and I think that that's an important thing to remember in the drums, especially in improvised music, that it's a musical instrument. It's not an instrument to, that's just a, uh, a form for riffs you've worked out. And sometimes I think even in the drum clinic, at, uh, the drum clinic universe, you know, you kind of, it's a difficult space. I feel for anybody doing it that feels like they just got to show up and just mac out all their stuff because, you know, I, there's a lot of people that do that really well. I'm actually not one of those guys that does that very well. I, I, don't, I don't have that trigger in me to show up and just like mow everybody down, which I've seen many clinics like that and they're really fun, you know, but that's just not my um, thing. So anyway, that was a long answer to say I don't warm up, uh, but mentally, just like anyone, just try to prepare on that level. Thank you. Yeah, so following on that, I hear when you're playing, you do a, it seems like you start with an ostinato that you like, or maybe a couple that you're polyrhythming, and then you just evolve them. Do you, do you have a structured way of evolving them, or does it just sort of happen? That's a great, thank you for noticing that, and, uh, and um, I'm standing up because I'm going to come out there and get you now. <laughs> no, no. Okay. no, no, I know, I know. I'm kidding, no, I'm kidding, I hear you. No, in fact, it's very insightful what you're saying, and yeah, a lot of times with improvising, especially in a situation like this where it's like there's some time elements and everything, it, for me it's almost like a line drawing. It starts with one thing, 
and if I feel like I can build on top of it, you know, I can. And you know, try to vacillate between structural things and and you know other things. You know, I was just talking recently about soloing and all these things. And one of the things I like to do is I like to use rhythmic motifs as jumping off points. I don't. It's almost like um, they they can provide seconds of a foundational thing to 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 set a new idea forward. So and sometimes I play totally amorphically free and things like that where it just becomes tones and shapes and things like that but typically for me a drum solo especially within the jazz context or whatever it to me it, it shouldn't be too long and it should have just some sort of like not not a macking macho thing at all but more of like a presence immediately i'm not i'm not a huge fan of like super precious long building hitting the cymbals with mallets for a minute while I sort of get, I'm just, it's not my, I, I come from that sort of Elvin Jonesy kind of like get in there and just like, wah, and then get out, you know what I mean? So today even, just like the idea you're alone and doing this, yeah, I try to use a, a motif that can lead to some other idea and then remember where it started and try to get back down there, you know? My hand started to get kind of cold during that last one. <laughs> Did you notice I was holding the stick? I was holding the stick like this for a minute. I was like, wow, that's a, that's my new grip. Yeah, that was that probably sounded really good. Anyway, thank you though. Yeah, that's does that does that answer that enough? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking because I, I do the same thing melodically as a guitar player. Yeah. I always sometimes start with, okay, I've got a little melody. Okay, now how can I add to it? Oh yeah. How can I alter it? Sure. I remember where I came from. I mean that's improvising, you know, in the jazz tradition especially. You know, you have a melody. It's not just chord changes and chord scales and things like that. At its highest, it's 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 understanding the melodic, yeah. uh, in, uh, uh, a melodic uh, a attention to the to to the the melodic themes of the music, and then seeing what you can how you can personalize it. Yeah, it's and it's the same with drumming. Yeah, it's the same. Play yeah, it's, it's 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 something that sometimes you have to make people be aware of that it's absolutely a hugely melodic instrument, and there's a lot of possibilities for counterpoint while you're playing. And it's not just about, like like I said, not just about some sort of one-dimensional or two-dimensional kind of like bashing or, or precious riffs or whatever. It's a plane going and far, see, it'd be like, I have to tell you one thing is funny. I played the Monterey Jazz Festival about four years ago. Uh, well, I played it a few times. Uh, there's another funnier story about Clint Eastwood, who is one of the artistic directors of the Monterey Jazz Festival. If you do not know that, Clint Eastwood is a huge jazz guy. And um, I played there first time in 2003, and he was at the gig, and he hated us, and told um, told the rest of the board never to have us back. Thanks, Clint. <laughs> anyway, um, anyway, um, then a few years ago, yeah, that's why I'm playing a freaking parking lot. <laughs> I didn't realize he had that kind of power outside of film. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a powerful person. I got the phone once he dropped you, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ellis got the call as soon as Clint dropped me. That's a genius. <laughs> I was playing all these handmade drums that Clint makes in his workshop. It's just, they're beautiful, too. He makes them with a jackknife, and it's just really something. He's very powerful. Anyway, uh, then about five or six years later, I was there with a great saxophone player named Tim Byrne, a very, very renowned uh, avant-garde uh, improvising saxophones and I was there in a, in a new project of his and <clears throat> that's not the most progressive festival I have to say as far as like it's programming it's great and I've played there a few times it was wonderful I played there with Joshua Redman a few years ago and other things it's great I saw some amazing music there over the times I've been there but it's not known as the edgier kind of avant-garde music festival and so we were an anomaly um, there and um, the next morning this is just for anyone who feels like you have to succeed all the time. You don't. This is my motivational speech. The next morning, and we're this high-level band, you know, like of improvisers, and Tim is very famous and, and uh, for his music. And um, he read a review to us in the band going to the airport. There was already a review of the show, and it said that there was more melody in a plane going overhead than there was in the entire show. thought I'd just tell you that. Since the plane went over, <laughs> yeah. it made us all feel great. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, do you ever play Tim's wood kits or just the approach? I absolutely play, play Tim's wood kits, which I love. And I will say this, though, before anybody is freezes to death. Tim's acrylic kits are very special, though. 
I, I don't usually like acrylic drums and beyond the sort of theatrical element of the John Bonham references and whatever. And when they first started making these many years ago, I couldn't believe the tone. And even today, I was like, again, hit this bass drum. And it's just incredible. I don't know what your secret is there, but it's very different from Fives and Ludwig and anyone else who does it. I don't know enough about the construction of drums to know the secret. Maybe I'm sure Tim Lane can hip everybody. Incredible, though. I have a bebop size kit of this and that's the one i play these aren't mine but i do have a wood kit and a couple of very special snare drums that tim made for me over the years one with a tweed um that tweed one is incredible so yeah i i you know i'm not typically a, the most nerdy kind of p picky drum guy but i just love the idea of knowing the people that make your drums and having them be really good people and a small business type thing and a community type thing but truly these are spe the way they they make acrylic drums is very special if you know anything about acrylic drums and how they sound they usually don't sound as as much range and m melodicism uh, like i said this is not typically my head choices even though i understand it for today but but i typically play more ambassador coded but this kick drum is unbelievable i mean i was just hit it right away lane you were like i didn't even tune it it's just incredible man so yeah i do play a lot of kinds though yeah you play with a lot of different uh auxiliary percussion stuff on the drums do you have some like what are your go-to's for that and how do you pick out those uh, Put on the drum. Yeah, for me, it's just, sometimes it's just, I have some toys, too, that I sometimes play with that I've always just tried to look for things outside the normal, pers uh, the normal kind of arsenal of, like, like um, auxiliary percussion, like you said. I mean, I like to put things on things more than I like to do anything else, just to change the idea of the snare, you know. Like, if you put these on, you put them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Without. And then it just immediately just makes me think. You know, to me it's got, immediately it has almost like a New Orleans second line type, yeah, yeah. like, trick. And it's just going to make me think differently. I don't, I tend to not sit there and go like, oh yes, I worked out my Doombeck playing and my, you know, I have this arsenal of all this stuff. I, again, just appropriate wherever I can, you know, so appropriating anything wherever I can. So I find things that are more malleable. A lot of times they're like old Fisher Price toys or I used to play with walkie talkies where, you know, toy walkie talkies can feed back on each other. And so you throw like, and then you have the antenna and you can use it as a, st just anything to do it seriously and not do it, you get through the aspect of it being kind of humorous on some level, and then it becomes something deeper, and I think that's actually a larger theme in my existence, I think, is just starting with some sort of found uh, object or uh, humble materials space, and then seeing what you can do with that, instead of like, I've got my arsenal of all these absolutely perfectly tuned crotales and things like that that I've studied in, you know, at, at at Juilliard or something. For me, it's always like, oh, I'll just take that and throw it here and meh. Hey, I'm sure it's, everybody's getting a little chilly, right? No? Yes. Is there one final question or does everybody want to go inside? I thank you all so much for coming out and I think it's great that Tim left too. <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> Tim's just like this. Leaning back. Tim's like, Tim drove away. He's at Old Country Buffet right now. Um, I really greatly appreciate you guys coming out. It's very touching to have any, and I, I'm sure you're all aware of how great this shop is, and Lane and Tim and everyone, and I thank you so much. I, trust me, this heater doesn't work for shit. I'm as cold as you are. Trust my hands are freezing. And I really, really appreciate everyone being here and supporting this. Thank you very much for coming. Really cool. Thank you.